This is the first of several videos where we're going to look at the detailed design of heat exchangers and put together a simple heat exchange network. We're going to frame this around an example problem where we're going to cool 10,000 kilograms an hour of benzene from 90 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius using cooling water from a tower. We're also going to heat 10,000 kilograms per hour of paraxylene from 25 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius using saturated low pressure steam. In this example, we're going to let ChemCAD manage the steam and cooling water flows during the sizing calculations. We're not going to worry about that in the main flow sheet itself. In later videos, we'll look at how to take explicit control of those streams. I've gone ahead and set up already the engineering units for the simulation. I've set them up to match the units in the problem statement, kilograms, degrees Celsius, pressures in bars, time in hours. Uh, this is the common SI unit set. I've also set up the components. I've established benzene and paraxylene as our two feeds. I've also had to include water in the system because water is the utility we're going to be using in both ex heat exchangers. Once I've gone through that, the thermodynamic wizard ran, established a thermodynamic method, and that method was acceptable for this problem. With these exchangers I've set up to save you time from watching me type and drag and drop materials. Um, I'll just point out that I picked heat exchanger number four, principally so that I could indicate in the flow sheet which material was on the tube side and which was on the shell side. ChemCAD actually doesn't read that from here, but I wanted to make the flow sheet look like that. I have to specify my feeds and my exchanger specifications. My benzene feed is available at 90 Celsius and 3 bar and has a flow of 10,000 kilograms per hour. Our xylene feed has a temperature of 25 Celsius, pressure of 3 bar, and again a flow of 10,000 kilograms per hour. We need specifications on each exchanger, so I'll right click, edit unit op data. For these simple exchangers, we can only make one specification. So in this case, I'm going to pick the temperature of stream two, uh, the benzene exit temperature, which is given as 40 Celsius. For the xylene, the easiest specification to catch would be, the, again, the exit temperature, 90 Celsius. So our exchangers are specified, our feeds are specified, so it should be able to run. And we got no warnings, no errors. We got a clean run. So now we can look and see the heat loads just by mousing over these operations. You can see that the exit temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, 90 degrees Celsius are what we specify. Now we need to size the heat exchangers. We'll start with the benzene cooler E100. We'll select it. We'll go to sizing, heat exchangers, shell and tube. It's asking here in this edit streams for proper information about the utility this exchanger is going to use. So this is actually going to be water at 30 degrees Celsius and five bar. We don't know the flow rate. All we need to do is put in something to indicate the composition. We need to tell ChemCAD explicitly which side is the process side, which side is the utility side. As we just discussed, the benzene should be on the tube side. ChemCAD has provided here a rule of thumb pressure drop for the utility side. And now we need to fix a specification for the exiting utility. For cooling water, our typical rule of thumb is that it shouldn't leave any hotter than 50 Celsius, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so we'll do that. ChemCAD now goes through uh, generating a heat curve uh, after doing a simple material and energy balance. Let ChemCAD do that. You can see it's taken 11 points or 10 steps down the exchanger. There's nothing odd or unusual here, so we're ready to go forward. This is the main part of the sizing dialog. First thing to make sure of is that you pick design mode rather than rating mode. Rating mode will let ChemCAD calculate the performance of an exchanger you've always specified, but it won't calculate a new one, so we need to put it in design mode. The TEMA class has to do with the type of service. TEMA R is for refinery service. 
Tema C is for chemical plant service, so we'll go ahead and pick that. We'll send this as a horizontal exchanger. These next three drop boxes give us the physical configuration of the exchanger. You can see that ChemCAD has identified that on the tube side, the benzene side, we've got a sensible temperature change. On the sterile side, we also have sensible flow, the cooling water changing its temperature. So we can accept these. Uh, I should say the modeling methods here, these have to do with how heat transfer coefficients and pressure drops are, are estimated. Uh, we won't be worrying about those in this class. Okay, some design criteria. These are tube side pressure drop, shell side pressure drop. These are typical rule of thumb values. They would look more rational uh, as if, if they were in PSI. Um, main thing on this screen that you might want to change is have it optimize the number of tube passes. And then we will go through a number of dialog boxes where for now we are just going to accept the defaults. So you can see how this works. One thing I'll point out is that if you're using anything other than carbon steel, you need to make that correction in this part of the dialogue. Once all that's data are entered or verified, we end up with this set of options. And the most important one at this point is to calculate. And you can see went through 39 iterations. What is happening here is ChemCAD is doing the pressure drop calculations, estimating the heat transfer coefficients, um, looking at the mechanical design of the exchanger until we meet the pressure drop specification and the thermal specification. ChemCAD is also changing the cooling water rate as we go as well. Now we have a warning here. The tube side velocity is too low. Another warning, the shell side velocity is too low. So this design is not good as it stands. What we can do for now is go into the general specifications. The shell side velocity was too slow. That means the, one of the first things we should try would be going from one pass on the shell side to two passes on the shell side. That will also double the number of tube passes. So let's see what this does. Okay, we get just a note here. That's because we've changed one of the key uh, elements of the design calculation. We want to continue. It'll let us ask us to verify some of these things. We can go through the calculation. It converges with no errors, so now we can look at our results, view results. I like to look at the summary results page where we get the heat transfer area. This is the heat exchange area as designed for the tube length, number of tubes, etc. The area required is what's needed to meet the design specification. So we've got a little bit of over design, so that's good. Be careful with units here. This will work in the display units for the simulation. I'll also show you this option here, a TEMA sheet. And what the TEMA sheet provides is standard specifications for the heat exchanger. You can, um, I'll let you take a look at this at your leisure, but you should be aware that it's here. Let me exit out of here, exit out of here. We'll save these changes. Actually, one thing I'll say about the TEMA sheet is in addition to some of the basic design parameters here, it also provides things like the sizes of the nozzles coming in. Uh, here you can see the inlet ID for the shell side, the inlet ID for the tube side, and same for the exit. This lets us know physically how big these nozzles are going to need to be. So let me close this out. ChemCat has saved this information. Let's do the same thing for the xylene heater. So we're going to go to sizing, heat exchangers, shell and tube. Okay, in this case, our utility is saturated low pressure steam. So we're going to give the steam pressure. And we're going to give the vapor fraction because it's saturated. And ChemCAD will calculate now the pressure. We don't know the, the flow rate, so we'll just give it a number. And ChemCAD goes to the same set of questions here. So we again identify that the xylene is on the tube side, the steam is on the shell side. Now we can fix either an outlet temperature or an outlet vapor fraction. In this case, let's set the vapor fraction. If we leave this zero, ChemCAD doesn't always handle zeros properly. So let's put it instead of zero, a very small number. So basically we condensed all but a very, very tiny fraction of our incoming steam. ChemCAD again generates the heat curve. 
You can see the steam coming in at 160, leaving a little bit lower than 160. That's because of the pressure drop on the shell side of the exchanger. But that all looks good. Remember, we put this into design mode. Uh, we'll go with uh, Team C exchanger again. One pass. You can see it's caught sensible flow on the tube side and horizontal combinant condensation on the shell side. Again, we'll optimize the number of tube passes. Say OK a lot. And let it calculate the exchanger. No errors. Let's take a look at the results. Okay, and it's coming up with about six square meters as the effective heat transfer area for the design it came up with. Um, needs about five square meters. Just working with standard dimensions, it needs six. But this this is, looks like a pretty reasonable design. The area may be a little bit low for a shell and tube exchanger, but that's uh, a different discussion. So with that, we've done detailed designs of these two exchangers. We now could go back in there. We can get tube counts. Uh, let's just go back to sizing for a moment. I'll show you that. It's available in the TEMA sheet. You can look at the exchanger geometry. You can see there's 87 tubes, four tube passes. The tubes are 4.8 meters long. These are all results of the ChemCAD calculation. Uh, I would encourage you to try this on your own. I will provide this this final converged uh, sized ChemCAD file and post it with the video. See you in the next example.